guests and welcome to the last video in this bag sewing series. Today we're going to be sewing Emma, which is another Missouri Star exclusive pattern that I designed. If you haven't seen the other videos in this series yet, I definitely encourage you to check those out. There's lots of skill building tips throughout there leading up to this pattern, but if this is the first video that you're starting with in the series, I'm confident that you'll be able to sew along with me. I'll take you step by step to show you how to make the entire bag from start to finish. So for this project, you'll learn lots of tips on sewing with different materials and making different pockets. There's an interior zipper pocket, an interior slip pocket, two exterior pockets, and a shoulder strap. So this is a great project to feature some eye-catching prints that you have and try some new fabrics as well. So first we're gonna start with fusing the interfacing to the coordinating pieces. So there are only a couple pieces that you have to fuse the interfacing to to add some more stability. The first are your strap connectors. So this is out of your main fabric. And I already went ahead and fused the interfacing to the wrong side of both pieces. So whatever type of interfacing that you're using, you'll just follow the manufacturer's instructions. So I recommend using a fusible, lightweight, woven interfacing. It behaves really well with the cotton fabric, so it can iron out any creases versus using a non-woven interfacing. So woven fabrics pair with a woven interfacing. So I'm gonna set those pieces aside. You'll also fuse interfacing to the wrong side of your lining base piece. And the lining panels to the wrong side. It's nice to have a little bit firmer lining, so that's why we added interfacing to those. And next we're gonna shape the base pieces. So you'll cut out the corner template included in your pattern. And I've already went ahead and rounded the corners on the contrast base piece, but I'll show you how easy it is to mark the corners on the lining base piece. So you're gonna simply position the template so it's even with the side edges. And I'm marking on the wrong side of my fabric, so that way any markings are hidden within the interior of the bag. And I'm just gonna use a washable pen and mark the curved edge from side edge to side edge. And then just keep rotating the template to each of the corners to trace all four corners. And you'll need to flip the template over to trace the other sides. Then take a scissors and simply cut along the marked lines. So here's what both pieces will look like after rounding the corners and you can set aside the lining base for the moment. The next step in the pattern is to attach the pieces to the foam. So the pattern instructs to cut a large piece of foam and then you'll take your pieces and arrange them on the larger piece of foam and machine base them in place. So I think that option is a little bit more beginner friendly and it's a little bit faster because you don't have to take the time right away to cut out the foam pieces to the exact shape as the pattern pieces. Um, but you could certainly cut your pattern pieces out of the foam. So I already have a couple pieces prepped here and I'm just going to show how to stitch the fabric to the foam just with this one piece here as an example. But you'll stitch two of your center panels to the foam, two of your side panels, and then one of your, your contrast base pieces. So you'll use an eighth inch seam allowance to stitch those down. And then after sewing, since it's on a larger piece of foam in the instructions, then you'll just cut out the pieces along the edges. So I think it's a little bit easier for beginners because then you don't have to cut those additional pieces right away. And it prevents your fabric from shifting too. So if there is a little bit of a movement of your pieces on the foam, then you can cut it even. and You don't have to worry about aligning the edges right away. Um, another tip for attaching the pieces to the foam is to adhere some basting spray to the wrong side of your fabric and then you can stick it down to the foam and that'll prevent the shifting. Otherwise, you can use some sewing clips and clip around the edges to hold the layers together. So just align all the edges if you decide to cut the pieces out 
And if you're using a larger piece of foam, you could also pin your pieces to the foam. So the Wonder Clips are very helpful because this foam is thicker than some of the other stabilizer materials and the clips hold the fabrics and those multiple layers together nicely. So over at the machine, we're just going to baste around the edges with an eighth inch seam allowance. So you can lengthen your stitch length to either four or five millimeters to just speed up the process of sewing around. And since it's just basting, it's just holding the pieces together. So I already went ahead and have my other pieces stitched down and we're ready for the next step. All right, so the next step is to attach the purse feet and these are optional to install, but they do add a little bit of more support to the bottom of the bag and also lift your bag off of the table or wherever you're setting it on to help protect it. So you're gonna measure in, I'm gonna mark on the wrong side. So I'm gonna flip over the contrast base piece and measure in from each edge according to the pattern. And just mark lines all the way around in from each side. So where each of the lines intersect is a placement point for a purse foot. So we're gonna start at one intersection and simply take a seam ripper and mark a short, or cut a short slip at the cross point and take one purse foot and you're gonna poke the prongs of the purse foot through from the right side to the wrong side. And take one of your washers, place it over the prongs and bend the prongs away from the center. And to secure the hardware even more, I recommend adding a drop of permanent glue such as E6000 or Loctite. And then if you have any scraps of your lightweight woven interfacing or any interfacing really, you can iron a piece over the wrong side of the hardware. So that'll help protect your lining fabric from getting ab abrasion on it from the metal hardware. And then you'll continue to install the rest of the purse feet. So here's what your base will look like after all four feet are installed and you can set this piece aside for the moment. All right, the next step is to make and attach the strap connectors. So you're gonna take both of your strap connector pieces and your side panels and also two one inch rectangle rings. So we're gonna start by ironing in both long edges of each of the strap connector pieces to the center. If you'd like, you can mark the center length first. So just measure in and then mark a line down the center and that's a little bit more helpful to do the pressing, but I'm just going to eyeball it and fold each of the long edges to the center. And then just give it a good press all the way down each of the strap connectors. So after those are pressed, you're going to top stitch a quarter inch from each folded edge to hold the folds in place. And since this is the top stitching, I like to flip it over so the right side is face up just to make sure that my stitches are nice and even and look nice from the outside of the fabric. And for top stitching, I generally use a three millimeter stitch length so the stitches are a little bit more defined and it has that professional look. So then you can repeat for the other strap connector. Um, I'm gonna set this one aside for now and take one of your rectangle rings and slide it over one end of your strap connector and fold the end to the wrong side. So the wrong sides are together and hold together with a sewing clip or a pin. And then you'll position the strap connector so it's centered 
over one side panel. And you can use some basting tape or some pins to hold it in place. So to apply the basting tape, you would just add a strip along the center and then you can stick it in place. But I'm just gonna use some pins and you'll position the strap connector according to your pattern. So then over at the machine, you're going to stitch the connector in place with an eighth inch seam allowance. We're gonna start along the hardware and then pivot. So down the side with an eighth inch seam allowance across the bottom and then back up to the top. So I like to use a zipper foot for this step to sew along the hardware so that way you can get nice and close. So the foot on this machine is very narrow and I'll just get as close to the hardware as I can and make sure to back stitch. So here's what it'll look like when it's done and if you'd like you can also stitch over your previous top stitching again and stitch a box or a rectangle and even an X inside the box for reinforcement since this area will have a lot of stress once you add weight to the bag you want to make sure that that's nice and secure. So I'm using contrasting threads so that way you can see the stitch lines really clearly in the steps. This is actually a great pattern to feature contrasting thread if you're comfortable with that. It adds a nice pop of color, but if you are a beginner, you might want to use matching thread. So if your lines get a little uneven, then the matching thread will coordinate and blend a little bit better. So it's up to you if you wanna try the coordinating thread or the contrasting thread for this project. So the next step is to attach the side pockets. The side pockets are from your accent fabric and we're gonna attach them to the side panels. So I've already went ahead and finished two side panels for the side pockets, we'll flip it over to the wrong side and you're gonna fold the top long edge a quarter inch to the wrong side. So if you'd like, it's a little bit more beginner friendly to take your ruler and measure a half inch down and mark a line. Then you can take that top edge and fold it to the line so you don't have to worry about measuring while the fabric is folded since it does tend to bounce back a little bit with the cork fabric or faux leather. Then you can take some sewing clips and just hold the folds in place. And at the machine, you're gonna sew an eighth inch from the folded edge. So then you'll repeat for the second accent pocket. And this time I'm just going to fold it as I sew and align the raw edge. Sometimes the clips get in the way and you end up having to align it again anyway. So whichever way works best for you. So after top stitching, we're going to attach the pockets to the side panels. So with right sides up, you're going to first align the side edges and make sure that the bottom edge is even and add some sewing clips. And you'll notice that the pocket lifts up a little bit in the middle and that's intentional. So then when you're adding items inside the pocket, there's plenty of space for those. And then you'll ease the bottom edges and align those. Then at the sewing machine, we're gonna sew a quarter inch from the sides and the bottom edge. And make sure to back stitch at the very beginning and at the end for reinforcement. So here's what the pocket will look like after stitching to the side panel, and then you'll repeat for the remaining pieces. So 
now that these are done, you can set your exterior pieces aside for now. I hope you're finding that this pattern is coming together quicker than expected. So all of our exterior pieces are prepped and we'll move on to the lining. So now we're gonna work on making and attaching the slip pocket. So take both of your slip pocket pieces and place them right sides together. And I'm using a light lining fabric, so I found it helpful to mark the wrong side of my fabric as I went along. It was easy to grab the pieces. So place them right sides together, aligning all the edges and pin together. It's always nice having a slip pocket inside your lining so you can put your phone or other items that you want to access really quickly. And at the machine, we're gonna sew with a quarter inch seam allowance on all sides except one edge, which will be the bottom edge, will leave a three inch opening. So what I like to do is you could mark it with a marking utensil or I'm gonna add two pins and that'll be the indication of my start and stop point. So you're gonna sew around with a quarter inch seam allowance. So as I reach those two pins, I'm going to remove those and backstitch. I recommend taking a scissors and just trimming the corners. Just be careful that you do not cut through your stitches. And this will help the corners look really smooth after we turn the pocket right side out. So then you're going to turn the pocket right side out by pushing the fabric through that opening that we left. So as you turn the pocket right side out, I like to use our Sally Tomato Essential Turning and Pressing Tool, which is great for creasing and turning out corners. And I like to use the pointed end for a stiletto to help guide fabrics to the machine. So it's a great multi-purpose tool. So to help poke out the corners, I like to use the curved end. The pointed end might poke through the stitches and make a hole. So use the curved end and put it inside between the layers and kind of just run it along the edge of the fabric to poke out the corner. And you can go from both directions for all the corners. So then you're gonna give the pocket a good press. And at the opening area, you'll want to make sure that the raw edges are turned in about a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna start by taking the iron and pressing those folded edges against the wrong side. And then press the rest of the pocket flat. So then along the top edge, which does not have the opening, you're gonna do some top stitching and you're gonna sew an eighth inch from the top edge. So next take one of your lining pieces and with right sides up, you're going to position the pocket according to the pattern. So it'll be centered down from that top edge and add some pins to hold it in place. And make sure to add some pins along that opening edge so everything stays even and flat. Then you'll top stitch with an eighth inch seam allowance along the sides and the bottom edge. So this will close up that turning opening and make sure to back stitch at the top edges. So here's how the slip pocket should look when it's done. So the opening is at the top and this piece can be set aside and we're gonna work on installing the zipper pocket next. So start by taking both of your zipper pocket lining pieces and you're going to press the long bottom edge a half inch to the wrong side. So you can take your ruler and measure the half inch and press.
Then take your ruler and we're going to measure down from the top edge according to the pattern and mark a horizontal line. Then you're going to measure down and mark a second horizontal line according to the pattern. And also measure in from each side edge and mark vertical lines and you can start and stop at the previous horizontal lines. So we're creating a placement box for the zipper. Then you're going to take your other lining panel, the one that does not have the slip pocket attached, and you're going to position the marked zipper pocket piece according to the pattern and pin in place. Just add some pins around the outside of the placement box. And next at the machine, you're going to sew along the placement box lines. And I recommend shortening the stitch length to about two millimeters. So that way it has an easier, or it has a cleaner fold line when we turn it in a minute. Now you're going to take your scissors and I like to fold the fabric a little bit so the lining panel is wrong sides together and just cut a little snip in the center of the placement box and then you can take your scissors and we're going to cut until we're about a half inch from the side edge and then you're going to cut diagonally up to each of the corners. And I'm going to flip it around and do the same on the other side. Now we can remove the pins. So another reason why we did a shorter stitch length for the placement box is it'll help with turning and prevent those puckers in the corners. So I'm going to start by using this seam roller and just press away the pocket from each side of the placement box and just press a really hard crease from each direction. And then you're going to fold the fabric to the wrong side. So you're gonna just bring it through the opening. So then the zipper pocket and the lining piece will now be wrong sides together. And I like to take the seam roller and press it first, and then we'll take it over to the iron to make sure everything is flat. So just use your fingers and kind of roll the seam to help make sure that it's right along the edge. So then to get an even more professional finish, we're gonna take the iron and just make sure everything is pressed flat. And I also flip it over and press it from the other direction too. Next, you're gonna take your zipper and have the zipper coil face up. And I love using Wonder Tape or double-sided basting tape for installing the zipper pockets. So I'm gonna cut a small piece and apply it to each of the long edges of the zipper. So just press down to adhere the tape to the zipper and then peel off the paper to expose the sticky side. So if you're right-handed, you'll want the pull to open to the right. And if you're left-handed, you'll want to flip the zipper around and have the pull open to the left. So I'm right-handed, so now's the time to position your zipper for you. And then you're going to take your lining panel and center it over the zipper. So just make sure that it's within that placement box and the coil is centered. And then just press down to adhere it. And what's nice about the tape is you can Lift the fabric up and reposition if you need to. So if you'd like, you can add a couple pins just to make sure everything stays in place.
And then you're gonna sew an eighth inch around the outer edge of the placement box. And I'm using Sally Tomato nylon coil zippers. So they are a nylon coil, but it looks like metal. So they are safe to cut and sew over. So we're gonna sew directly over the zipper coil. And make sure that you move your pull out of the way as you sew. So I'm actually going to stop as I get to the pull, lift up my foot and zip it out of the way. So that'll just make sure that your tape stays even throughout as you sew around. And on the other side, I'll zip the pull out of the way and then continue sewing. So now you're gonna flip the project over and place the other zipper panel right sides together with the attached zipper panel and align all the edges. And you're gonna start by pinning together just the top edge. So do not pin through your lining panel at all, just the pocket pieces. So it's easiest to sew this next step with the pocket pieces against the bed of the sewing machine and you're gonna sew across the top edge here. So you're gonna sew across the top with a half inch seam allowance. Next, we're gonna sew the side edges. So you're going to simply move the lining panel away from the right side and make sure that the right side edges are even and keep those bottom edges folded. So you can add some pins to make sure that they stay folded and even. So make sure that your lining panel stays out of the way and sew the side edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. So then you'll repeat for the left edge and this time I'm going to turn it over and you're going to sew starting at the bottom edge up to the top edge. So it's a little bit easier to fit under the machine that way, and it helps prevent your fabrics from shifting. So here's what your pocket will look like when it's done. We are going to leave that bottom edge open, and the entire bag is gonna be turned right side out through that opening when we're all done. So do not sew along that bottom edge, and it's also very important to unzip the zipper at this step. So that way, after we sew the bag together, it will be open to turn it all right side out. All right, so our lining pieces are prepped and our exterior pieces, and we're ready to assemble the exterior and the lining. So first off, if you'd like to install an optional handmade label, now is the time. So this hardware is fun to just tie the whole bag together and add a little bit of extra professional touch to the bag. So you'll notice that the hardware has prongs and it comes with a washer. So you're going to center the washer up from the bottom edge of one center panel according to the pattern. And you'll want to note which holes that the prongs poke through. So for this type of hardware they poke through the second hole on each side. So I'm just going to mark those. and then take a seam ripper and cut along each slit. And you'll only wanna cut about an eighth of an inch. So that way the hardware has a nice tight fit. And then you're going to poke the prongs through from the right side to the wrong side, flip it over and add the washer. So it's very similar to how the purse feet are installed but this time it just has two prongs. And again, you could take some interfacing and iron a scrap over the wrong side to help protect your fabric. So now take one of your side panels and place it right sides together with the center panel and align one of the side edges. And you'll notice that there is about a quarter inch of fabric that's a little triangle shape on the top and then also extending on the bottom. And that is also intentional so then when we sew our seam, 
the top edge and the bottom edge will be even. So take some sewing clips and make sure that that extension of fabric is even on both ends. And you're going to sew along that edge with 3 8 inch seam allowance. So now is a good time to take your scissors and trim away some of the foam from the seam allowance. And this will help reduce some of the bulk in the seam and it'll make it a little bit easier for top stitching. So just shave off some of that foam just from the seam allowance. Be careful that you don't cut through your stitches. So then you're going to just fold the side panel away from the center. So the seam allowance should be towards the center panel. And you're going to top stitch the center panel an eighth inch from the seam. And then you'll repeat to attach the other side panel to the opposite side of the center panel. So here's what your bag should look like so far. And now we're gonna repeat the same steps to attach the other center panel to the remaining side edges of the side panel. So just start on the right hand side and clip those side edges together. And we'll sew with 3 8 inch seam allowance just like before. So then align those last two edges, right sides together. So we're kind of creating a tube shape. And then to do the top stitching on that last seam, you'll press the seam allowance towards the center panel. You're gonna leave your project wrong side out and you're gonna sew from the right side. So you kind of have to maneuver the bag underneath the machine. But what's nice about using the foam is you can move it where you want it to and it'll just pop right back into shape. So don't be afraid to move the bag so that way you can see where you're sewing. If it gets too tight for you to see or you're not able to get a clear view of your foot, you could always backstitch in place, cut the threads, and then come in from the bottom edge and then sew up to your top stitching. But I'm gonna continue. I have a few inches left of my seam. All right, so now we're gonna mark the bottom center of the bag, the, of the exterior on the center panels and the side panels. So you can match the seams that we just sewn and flatten out the side panels and then just mark on the wrong side. So we're just marking along the bottom edge. And then you can match the seams in the opposite directions to find the center of the front and back center panel. Next, grab your contrast base piece and we're gonna fold it in half in both directions to mark the front, back, and side centers of this piece as well. So you wanna make sure that the long edge of the base is lined up with the center panel. So start by matching up the center marks first and add a sewing clip and repeat for the other side and then also match up the center marks on the side panel with the short edges of the base. So then you'll continue to clip around the entire base to hold the layers together. And the more clips, the better to prevent your fabrics from shifting. So I like to do the longer edges first 
and then you can ease in the side edges. So just make sure that all those raw edges stay aligned. So here's what your bag should look like so far. So just double check that the long edges are on the same side as the center panels. You wouldn't want the base to be the other direction. And it's easiest to sew this step with the base against the bed of the sewing machine. And you're gonna sew around the entire base with 3 8 inch seam allowance. So start on one of the long straight edges and move the bag out of the way as you sew. So next take your scissors and just trim some of the seam allowance along the curved edges and this will just help pop out those curved edges for a nice smooth finish. So just be careful you don't cut through your stitches and just shave off about an eighth inch or a quarter inch of the fabric and the foam. So then you can turn the exterior right side out. And this is a good time to just smooth out the edges to make sure that you don't have any holes. And if you need to, you can turn it wrong side out again and stitch to make sure you close up those holes. So you can set aside this piece for the moment and we're going to assemble the lining. So take both of your lining panels and place them right sides together aligning all the edges and pin together the sides. And you're gonna sew each of the side edges with 3 8 inch seam allowance. So I've already shaped the lining pieces so they're a little bit smaller than the exterior. So the lining will fit really nice inside your bag. Normally in my patterns, I tell you to increase the seam allowance and in the past videos. So those tips help for some patterns, but for this one, I've already gone ahead and shrunk the pattern pieces a little bit. So they'll fit nicely inside your bag. So we're gonna sew 3 8 inch all the way from the top edge to the bottom edge of each of the sides. So next we're going to mark the center front and back of the lining panels. So just match the side seams and fold your fabric to mark the center and then repeat to mark the centers of the base just like before. So we'll start by matching up the long edge with the center mark on one lining panel and pin together. and flip it over and match up the opposite center marks. And then match the side center with the seam. And you can finger press that seam open to help distribute some of that bulk. And then just align the rest of the edges and pin together. So then you'll sew around the entire base with 3 8 inch seam allowance. And again, I recommend placing the base against the bed of the sewing machine. So it's a little bit easier to move the fabric around and catch all of the layers in the seam this way. So 
So after sewing, you'll want to trim the seam allowances and the lining to a quarter inch wide. So I'm just gonna trim off about an eighth inch. It's a little bit easier in bag making to use the wider seam allowance as you sew. Make sure the edges stay even and then you can just trim off some of the excess. So after trimming, you can turn the lining right side out. And again, just run your fingers along the seams to make sure that you don't have any holes. If those should be sewn, now is the time. So you can set the lining aside for the moment and the next step is to attach the top zipper. So the first step is to finish off the raw end of the top zipper. So the side that your zipper pull closes to um, we will leave that open. So go to the opposite end that's raw and we're going to use a little bit of hardware. This is called a zipper cord end. So this style of hardware is used to finish off the raw ends of zippers or if you have a drawstring cord. So it's multi-purpose. So you're going to take the raw end and I like to fold the zipper tape with wrong sides together in thirds. So fold one side in and then the other side. And then I like to add some permanent glue inside the zipper cord end just for extra reinforcement. And then you'll slide your zipper end into the cap, flip it over, and the hardware comes with a very small screw. So if you lose this screw, you'll want to use the permanent glue for sure. If you don't have any glue on hand, that's when the screw works just as well. So it's a good idea to do both if you can. And then you just screw it in place. And next we're gonna finish off the end that will be open. So separate both of the coil and you're going to fold the ends of the zipper tape to the wrong side at a 90 degree angle. So the coil will be at a 90 degree, the tape will be at a 45 degree, and you can let a little bit of the fabric extend past that edge, and that'll help when we sew the next step. So you'll just pin the folded ends and repeat for the other side. And then at the machine, you're going to sew along the zipper tape. So I'm actually going to position the zipper so that way I can access this folded edge a little bit easier. And once it's under the foot, remove the pin and lower the foot and sew across the zipper coil and make sure to back stitch. And then you'll repeat for the other side. So here's what that open end of the zipper should look like after sewing. So now we're going to attach the zipper along the top curved edge of the exterior panel. So, since we're sewing it to a curved edge, I recommend to add basting tape along the long edges of the zipper, and this will help keep the zipper tape even. So you'll do this for both sides. So with right sides together, you're going to position that angled end about a quarter of an inch from the center of the side panel. And you can press the tape down to adhere it in place, but I'm also gonna add clips and make sure that you keep the edge of the zipper tape even with the top edge. So it's very important to keep the raw edge of your zipper tape even with that top raw edge of the bag. And as you reach the opposite center, the opposite side panel center. So as you reach the other side, 
of the center panel. Then you'll want to taper the zipper away from the raw edge according to the pattern. So read your pattern for the exact measurements on when to start tapering that away. And we're gonna start with just one half of the zipper and sew it to the exterior with a quarter inch seam allowance. So then as you reach that end, you're just going to keep the quarter inch seam allowance and just sew off the end of the zipper tape and make sure to backstitch. So now we're going to repeat to attach the opposite side of the zipper. So just make sure that your zipper isn't twisted and with right sides together, you're going to align the opposite ends again. So I start with that angled end of the zipper, the open end, and position it according to the pattern. And then you can continue clipping along the top edge of the bag. So again, as you reach the end side, then make sure that you taper the zipper out of the seam allowance, just like before. And this time we're gonna start at the open end of the zipper and sew up to the starting end. It's a little bit easier to position the bag under the machine this way. So after sewing, keep your exterior right side out and flip the zipper so that way you can test it to make sure that your zipper closes evenly. So just make sure that you tuck in the seam allowance and then you can zip it closed. So if you need to make any adjustments, then you can go back and fix those. <coughs> So if you're happy with your zipper, then you'll turn the bag wrong side out. And now we're ready for the final assembly. So now we're ready for the final assembly. Make sure that your lining is right side out and your exterior is wrong side out. So that way you can place your fabrics right sides together. So put the lining into the exterior and first match up the side seam with the center of the side panels and finger press that seam open and add a sewing clip to hold the layers together and repeat for the other side. Make sure that the zipper and the hardware stay down inside the bag. And then you can continue to clip along the top edge to attach the lining to the exterior and use lots of sewing clips to make sure that the layers stay together. So then you're gonna sew around the entire top edge of the bag with 3 8 inch seam allowance. So to eliminate some more of the bulk along the top edge, I'm just going to trim the zipper ends even with the top. And since this is a curved top edge, I'm going to take my scissors and cut a few notches along the top edge. And in between the notches, you can also cut a few slits and that will just help relax the fabric. Just be careful that you don't cut through your seam allowance. So now we're ready to turn the bag right side out. So grab your lining and pull it out. And then reach in through the opening of the zipper pocket. And I always recommend to push the base of the exterior through first. That's the bulkiest part. So just pull it through. And use your thumbs to work the fabric through. And 
and push out all the corners, just smooth out the base and the topped curve edge. And before you put the lining back into the exterior, we're gonna sew up the turning hole. So you can double check that you caught all of the fabrics in the seam allowance first before you sew this up. So you'll wanna make sure that those bottom edges stay even and tucked in towards the wrong side. And add a couple pins to hold the folds in place. Then you're gonna sew an eighth inch from the folded edges to close up the turning hole. So now you can arrange the lining into place and close up that zipper pocket. And now along the top edge of the bag, you'll want to roll the seam and flatten it so that way your zipper is along the very top of the seam. And you can add some sewing clips to make sure that the layers stay together or you can just hold it as you sew. But next we're going to top stitch around the entire top edge with an eighth inch seam allowance. And I usually like to start on the back on one of the side panels. Usually the center part of the bag is the part that is the focal point. So when you're back stitching, I kind of like to hide them along the top back. And the main part as you sew along the top is to make sure that everything is flat along the top seam. So you can crunch the bag and move it as you need to, to make sure that you can view the foot and the needle and everything is positioned properly. Then you can trim some of the threads. And then zip up your bag. And the last step of the instructions is to attach the shoulder strap. So you're gonna take your cork strap, and I love using cork fabric for straps because it's lightweight, very durable, and it makes the whole process a lot faster to make straps because it is a more durable, thicker material. So you're gonna fold the strap in half with wrong sides together and add some sewing clips. You could use tape if you'd like, but the clips are easy as well. And I'm just going to fold the strap as I sew. So you can continue clipping the entire length if you'd like. You're gonna sew on each side with an eighth inch seam allowance. So then turn it over and sew along the opposite side. So after top stitching, take the slider buckle and you'll position the slider buckle and the strap right side up. And you're going to feed the strap through the buckle from the underside over the center bar and then back down. And you'll want to fold the strap onto itself according to the pattern. So you can sew two lines across the end of the strap and make sure to back stitch for reinforcement or you can stitch a box with an X in between. I'm gonna turn the strap over so the underside is face up and sew across the strap so that way I can follow the edge of the foot along the raw edge of the fabric. Okay. 
And again, I'm using contrasting thread, so you might want to use matching thread for this step. So I usually just back stitch across the ends and the proper way to hide the thread tails is to take a hand sewing needle and bring your thread tails to the opposite side and knot them so you don't have those ends or see the back stitches. Um, but I usually just back stitch and use a matching thread and nobody will ever see. So now you're gonna take the bag and you're gonna have the underside face up and you're gonna start inside, from inside of the bag and feed the strap through the inside towards the outside and bring the buckle closer to the rectangle ring. And then you're going to make sure that the undersides are facing each other. So just make sure that your strap isn't twisted and feed the strap back over that center bar of the buckle. And you can pull a little bit more length through. And at this point, the zipper pull can be, or the, the zipper cord end can be tucked inside the bag too. So that'll give you a little bit more room to feed the strap through the rectangle. So then you're going to take that end of the strap, make sure that that underside is not twisted. And this time you're gonna thread the strap from the outside towards the inside, and then simply fold the strap back onto itself and you'll stitch the strap in place just like before. And then you can trim up any last minute thread tails. So here is how our finished Emma bag turned out. I hope you're feeling proud and accomplished if you've been following along with this series. Congratulations on making it this far. And if you have just tuned into this project, I encourage you to check out the other projects in this series as well. So there are a few other optional things that you can do in the pattern. You can add a fabric tab to the zipper pull if you're using a zipper pull that has a hole in the center or a circle style pull. And you could also add a tassel using tassel cap hardware and some of your scraps of cord fabric. So lots of options at the end of this project. If you do decide to make it and any of the other projects in this series, we would love to see. Use the hashtag MSQC show and tell so we can see and share what you've made. I hope that you've enjoyed this series and until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye. Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you aren't already part of the Missouri Star Quilt Company family, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss a thing. And if you click that bell, it'll notify you every time a new tutorial comes out.